our uh, planning commission and the city council and it would be regards to Sweet Home's uh, streetscape planning. And at this time, we will go ahead with roll call, please. I guess I will call roll. Um, Councilor Sanchez? Here. Councilor Richards? Present. Councilor Gerson? Present. Mayor Mahler? Present. Councilor Coleman? Here. Councilor Trask? Yes. Planning Chair Jeffrey Parker? Here. Planning Commissioner Journey? Planning Commissioner Melcher? Here. And Planning Commissioner Lohman? Here. Planning Commissioner Stevens? Here. Um, Councilor, yes, Councilor Gorley? Absent. Uh, Councilor Gorley was working today in Portland and will not make it the scene. And Planning- Are you making a motion? Well, no. I was gonna note also that Planning uh, Commissioner uh, Korn is not present tonight, nor is Oh, that's it. Yeah. Uh, we don't need any motions of absence because this is basically just a work session joint yes. joint meeting. So it doesn't matter. So I mean, it matters, but doesn't matter on the on the motions. Um, at this time, I will turn it over to Blair to take the ball and run with us tonight. OK, first off, uh, thank you all for coming. And uh, I know it's outside the normal schedule uh, of your meetings, but we very much appreciate it. So uh, as both the Planning Commission and the City Council should be aware, and if you're not, this is a refresher. Um, the point of a streetscape plan is to have kind of a, a cohesive plan for the whole downtown that includes um, pedestrian amenities, uh, sidewalk improvements, uh, street furniture, uh, benches and the like, um, artwork, uh, lighting that's more pedestrian friendly, and um, other improvements that make a downtown more of a uh, inviting destination and a place where people are attracted to be and therefore place that businesses are also attracted to be to take advantage of that con the, the, the traffic going coming to that space. We started this uh, last fall, I believe, is when we first put out the RFP and Doherty Landscape Associates uh, was a successful um, proposal and uh, they are here with us tonight. We held a initial public meeting earlier in the spring to kind of present some initial ideas and gather public feedback. We are now back with them to uh, essentially hear from them on what they learned from the public, but also uh, what changes and what their what their proposal is looking at like now. So there will be they, they have a presentation to give to you and then um, we will have an opportunity for discussion and questions. And we have a number of, uh, of images and things for people to wander around and, and take a look at after the presentation is over with. So um, let's uh, let's hear from DLA and please keep in mind any any questions and ideas that you may have and there will be definitely an opportunity to to bring those up. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, uh, for this opportunity to to speak with you. We consider this uh, more of a, a work session, and our goal is to uh, hear from you, get your response to our work so far. Uh, we've had the pleasure of uh, working on the project design-wise for a number of months now, and as Blair had mentioned, we uh, had an initial. Uh, workshop here and review session with the general public, which it was pretty much a full house, uh, both online and in person uh, last spring. So we've taken the information uh, that we learned from the public at that time, um, put it together, summarized it, and have developed the plans to the point where we have them now. So uh, I'll go through uh, most of the sl slides. Uh, Luzanne Smith is here from DLA as well and uh, she's going to assist with the presentation. She's the project manager uh, that uh, kind of organizes the, the production of the, the work and so forth. But you know, we, this last week has been you know, quite an effort from our office to bring the drawings up to a point to get this um, feedback from you, which we consider really important. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, issues downtown which uh, we have a good uh, grip on, but there's still a lot of options where we need your feedback. 
it's we home's a great place you know it has a lot of great bone structure a lot of great architecture and uh there's just so much more potential though you know one thing that we've learned while being in town is that our goal is to make sweet home more pedestrian friendly and welcoming uh but many of the roads the streets are extremely wide way wider than what is needed for typical truck and uh standard everyday traffic uh, so there's opportunities to to reduce some of the streets and make the pedestrian realm a little bit more in balance with the the streets. So, uh, yeah, why don't we uh, go through? Oh, uh, while we're still in this first slide, um, we are the prime consultants for the project, but we also have um, a lighting engineer and parking consultant, Kelly Sando of Sando Engineering. Uh, She's uh, contributed, but her, more, more, her work will will uh, be more important following this meeting. And then we have civil engineers on the project who will, will assist with feasibility and uh, cost issues. So uh, you know, why don't we go to the first slide? I guess you can pick, have your choice of what monitor you want to check out. Okay, so uh, from last time, uh, just to recap, we've kind of just did that. You know, we, we want to enhance the pedestrian experience. Safety is the primary concern. Uh, we want it to be walkable. Uh, that's done through lighting and it's inviting through street furniture. We want the streets to be attractive with uh, landscaping, street art, and just, just more space devoted to uh, pedestrian amenities. Gathering spaces are important. You know, you have a couple festivals here every year. Uh, you know, where do they go when they come downtown? We want to give some consideration to those spaces. However, most of what's available downtown is private. So we, we just look at some um, options there. And there's also opportunities for smaller gathering places that we're calling pocket parks. So those are all on the plans. And then, uh, you know, parking, as everybody knows, is uh, extremely important. So we're not neglecting that. In some areas, there may be a, a space or two less, but then we're adding, we're going to be looking at adding parking elsewhere and making sure that the areas downtown that re that, that have uh, peak hours uh, are accommodated. Okay. Uh, here is the overall plan uh, up above there. And uh, I know you can't make much of it out. You know, when we wander around later, we have the full size drawing up on the wall. But what we're showing here are the existing uh, buildings, which are basically uh, sort of that soft tan tone. The kind of mauve color is the paving. And you see there's a heck of a lot of paving. And, you know, there's opportunity for some of that to be used for parking as well as uh, other opportunities, for example, infill of buildings parks, gathering spaces, that kind of thing. All the green little circles you see on the drawing are opportunities for, for new uh, landscaping and street trees within the public uh, right of way of, the, of Main Street and Long Street. Oh, by the way, uh, the extent of the project is, uh, you know, Main Street, Long Street from what, 10th, basically where Ames Creek is over to 18th is pretty much the uh, boundary of what we're focusing on uh, during this effort. The, uh, the the bottom illustrations, you know, from left to right, there's Ames Creek. There's an opportunity perhaps to uh, have a pedestrian way along it, maybe cross on the bridge, have an overlook, perhaps some interpretation of what's happening there. Uh, there could be a little bulb out where the bridge is uh, because people can't park there anyway. So you know, we're, we're looking at those areas where, you know, when you go up and down Long Street, you'll see a lot of yellow paint on the curbs. Those are all opportunities to, you know, extend out a uh, landscape to have more amenities of planting, lighting, and seating, and so forth. Uh, the second small slide on the bottom over, those are gathering space options. We'll look at, we'll look at that in more detail. Uh, we've highlighted one, however, you know, we're not set on any particular location. Um, 13th Avenue, from our first community meeting and talking with uh, you know, staff uh, here at the city, 
has really been identified as a possibility for a festival street where it could be closed down and um, you know, good times had for all there at certain times of year. And right now it's just pretty much wall to wall paving. And so there's opportunity to actually in, increase parking and um, at certain times of year, close it down. But when it's, when it's open, it could be much better. The gist of it is we're, and we'll look at this in more detail, a one-way system uh, going north from Long Street toward Main. And then we, we took a, in, in regard to Main Street, as you know, ODOT has worked on that in recent years. And there's not a whole lot that can be done to making Main Street narrower because it's already pretty appropriate. In our initial study, we found the travel lanes are pretty appropriate for the truck traffic that's there. You could squeeze out a couple feet, but it's not, we determined it's not really worth redoing Main Street just to gain a couple feet of sidewalk. Now the sidewalks are narrow on Main Street, uh, but there are opportunities to extend out in certain places for those uh, amenities that, that we've mentioned. But Long Street, on the other hand, um, it's wider than it needs to be. We'll look at that in more detail as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, there's real opportunity on Long Street for it to be more pedestrian friendly. Okay. Um, here's that uh, overall plan being featured a little bit more. Um, the uh, small illustrations along the bottom, we'll lo also look at on more, more detail. But, you know, there's there's been the notion of the need for a town plaza, a uh, you know, a gathering space downtown that can accommodate, you know, a good, a good number of people on certain times of year. And so, you know, we spent those, those red um, areas, those red blotches you see on the plan above are potential locations for those. Uh, the one that we looked at is, uh, I believe they're at 10th, corner of 10th and Main. Um, there's pocket park opportunities. We talked about the Festival Street on on 13th and the amenities that could be done on Long Street. Uh, there's there's existing bulb outs. Does everyone know what a bulb out is? We extend the sidewalk out at typically at the intersections. That's been done partially on Main Street. There are some opportunities for additional locations for those to make the pedestrian crossings safer and more welcoming. Uh, the little illustration on the lower right, you, We'll probably see that better as you mosey around later, but that's an existing bulb out that's um, currently exist on Main Street. But um, I don't think we have the existing photo of that, but it's just barren concrete and it puddles. Nobody uses it. Um, it's uh, there's opportunity to enhance that. And, and, and that goes that's true for other places as well along Main Street. OK. So this slide focuses on the Festival Street on 13th. So the plan to the left uh, shows the basic components. From uh, the south, uh, there's a, a gateway uh, opportunity, which could be pretty cool to, to highlight 13th as a Festival Street. You, know, you can see the bulb outs provide ample opportunity for amenities, street art, and seating and so forth. Uh, we left the area open. Uh, you see where the feed store is. You know, they use that for loading and unloading. And that would be in the lower left of the plan on the left there. You see that uh, kind of big paved area. Well, that could be left for uh, loading and unloading. However, we thought it would be great. You know, they could perhaps do some merchandising out there, bring out some of their goods and and you know, even put some tables and chairs out there when they're not needing it for loading. And then when the streets are closed down, that could be used for performance space or a stage opportunity. So we're looking at maximum flexibility. You can see on the west side of 13th, we have diagonal parking. That's one way of increasing the density of parking in the area and then parallel parking on the uh, east side. Possibility the the alley that runs through the center could be a place that's highlighted with paving, could be used for performances, uh, 
and uh, you know other amenities. There's an opportunity for planting street trees and and all that. So by making it one one way and reducing the width of the street, um, there's great opportunity here. The sidewalks, by the way, I don't know if you walk, ever walked down the sidewalks on 13th, but uh, they're maybe five feet in width, five, six, seven feet, pretty narrow. So this plan, uh, I believe, increases them to eight feet. And uh, you can see in the uh, upper, you know, the illustration there, what it would look like from Apple Street looking north toward Maine. Um, it could be a pretty festive place and the uh, photos below project the activities that could be done there. Okay. Okay, here is Long Street and we looked at a couple options. We found that the, the Long Street has wider street than it's necessary. The travel lanes are 14 feet wide, which is wider than I-5. And so they don't need to be that wide. And uh, your engineer will confirm turning radiuses and all that. But what we're doing is called a, what do you call a road diet? Where you, uh, you, you narrow the street and then widen the sidewalks. And so the opportunity to, in doing that, we, if we reduce the 14 foot travel lanes to 11 foot, we have six feet to work with. So we looked at two options. Option number one above is where we, it, where we um, add six feet of sidewalk to the south side of Applegate. And or excuse me, Long Street, Applegate, where'd that come from? Um, Long Street. And and the um, option two is a balance where you take that uh, six foot and add three feet to both sides. The initial thought was the south side of Long Street really had a little bit more of a need for a wider sidewalk than the north side. But uh, we wanted to get your feedback on that. <clears throat> um, as you travel east, the need for wider sidewalks isn't as needed on the south side because you run into the church and the school property. So we didn't really think it was um, a high priority. So the plans show as you move, as you uh, it go beyond uh, what is it, 15th. At about 15th Street, then the sidewalk on the north side could be increased. So we're basically we're we're adding pedestrian area where we think it's needed most. But we'd like to get your feedback on that. Luzanne, is there something uh, anything uh, to add to that general uh, kind of the general thought here? No, I think I think just maybe um, uh, Lugia, if you could go to the next slide, just I think it will help everybody kind of see it a little bit better but just that on the so when we increase the sidewalk on the south side um, we allow for opportunities on the north side for sort of areas to kind of come out so for example in front of the laundry slash ice cream store allowing like a little bit of a bulb up where sort of using the parking space there to create a bench and um, space for trees and lighting. So we've kind of found opportunities between 10th and 15th to allow that to happen. And then again, you know, switched and added mid block crossings as well that help kind of just um, create more of a pedestrian friendly environment. Yeah, one, one interesting uh, characteristic we discovered uh, soon after beginning the project is that along Long Street, or along Main as well, you, you, you kind of skip every other block for a north-south street. So you're going all the way from 10th to 12th or uh, you know, 12th to, or you're, you're to you know, 13th, uh, 7th, 14th, 15th, whatever, uh, without crossings. So yeah, we've tried to incorporate into the plans opportunities for safe crossings. Um, we, we might want to call them mid-block crossings. So yeah, um, so even though uh, option one, we See, is it option one we, where we are adding the uh, all the space on the south side? Yeah, we're still addressing the north side, like Luzanne was saying, by creating islands and, and areas that bump out uh, where they're needed, where, where we think they're needed most. So these are just sections that compare the existing conditions, which are above, to the 
proposed option one and option two below. So you can see travel lanes are reduced from 14 feet to 11 feet. Parking lanes stay the same as eight feet as they've always been. But the beauty is that the sidewalks increase. So yeah, it would be great to get your feedback on what you think of this. OK. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. So <laughs> uh, this is just uh, a very general sketch looking um, looking down Long Street where you can see by uh, adding to the sidewalks, I think this is option two where we're adding adding a little bit on both sides. It, you know, suddenly you have opportunities for street trees, lights, and plantings and pedestrian amenities by squeezing things down a little bit. You know, right now, as you know, along Long Street, when you're walking along the north side, the trees that are the street trees are basically right in the middle of the sidewalk, which is um, you know not ideal especially if you're you know, in a wheelchair or have um, visual impairments. Um, so this also shows you know, the lights. Uh, the, the one shown here is the more timber timber uh, themed light, and uh, we're going to cover furnishings later, but we'd like to get your feedback on those. You can see the benches, the bulb outs at the intersections, opportunities for street art, and um, also, outdoor cafes, you know, some of the businesses can extend uh, tables and chairs, seating outside, or bring their merchandise out. You know, this gives you the, the space to do that. Okay. Oh, here's uh, that um, Main Street possibility. And what intersection is this at uh, 14th? 13th, yeah, at 13th. Right. Um, there's a, an existing bulb out there. We should. Oh, there it is. Lower right is the existing condition. Perfect. So you see how uh, you know what the character is of that currently, and that's an opportunity for pedestrian amenities that is currently lacking because we have the space. It's a it's a quite a slope there, and there's drainage issues. So the possibility of building a bench into that slope, you know, a, a hardscape concrete bench of seating wall of some type. Uh, with plantings and maybe uh, you incorporate art, you know, it could just be transformed. Something this block could be transformed uh, to something welcoming and uh, generate activity there. Okay. So the idea of the gathering spaces and pocket parks, you know, there's lots of opportunities that you saw in that previous plan. Uh, this is just an example of what could be done. Uh, you know, where the Espresso um, at the Espresso corner. And I know that's private property, so this is just a concept of what could happen there. The same idea could happen elsewhere. And so it'd be great to get, you know, any of your feedback on gathering spaces that you would see fit for this type of activity. Um, you know, up above is I think between the, the sketch up above is is between the um, newspaper building, Figaro's. And so, yeah, that's just kind of a fenced off area currently, as you can see to the left. Um, that could be uh, a pocket park, which would be pretty cool. You know, businesses could spill out. Figaro's could have a few tables and chairs out there. These are just possibilities, options, concepts uh, for consideration. We know it's private property, but uh, you know, sometimes the private and public can work together here. Uh, down below is um, the Espresso corner. And so there's a possibility. Yeah, that's a great corner, by the way. I mean, as you enter town from the west, uh, that would be an unbelievable place to highlight as a welcoming gathering space to downtown. Uh, and the Espresso could very easily move across the street where there's a vacant lot and uh, you could enter and exit through the alley without uh, causing any um, traffic problems over there. You know, it's just a thought. But anyway, uh, you know, the concept of this particular plaza is uh, you could have uh, performances, um, you know, when there's a lot of people downtown. There could be a restroom. You know, there's a lot of feedback from our first session here of having uh, public restrooms. That could be a possibility of that. It could be a concession building. The existing, I think it's the old 
pizza building that is currently on the site, you know, that could stay as some kind of pavilion or shelter, uh, or it could go to allow more room for this. There could be a water themed, um, you know, water play in this uh, location. It could serve as a stage uh, for performances. There could be seating around it, sort of like an amphitheater type of thing. Um, you know, the, uh, the cafe that anchors the west side could open up onto the space to have outdoor cafes. And, and then, um, you know, we also want, uh, see the alley as a real opportunity. We identified the alley at our last session as something that could be become a little bit more pedestrianized. People park there and they could enter a space like this or any other businesses uh, through the alley like you might have seen done in, in other towns. Um, so uh, Luzanne has been spending quite a bit of time uh, with uh, lighting and furnishing, so I'll let her describe this to you. Okay, so these last two slides, I'm just going to quickly kind of talk about, um, as everybody probably, or if you haven't picked up one, there's a summary of the, the feedback from the community meeting in the open house. And so, you know, just kind of getting a feel for what the community actually wants. And so these, you know, there were three lights on the previous one, and it seemed like here, yeah, um, these two lights really came out as the two that the community um preferred and I suppose as we talk about um, as Blaise said having a cohesive sort of um, with the streetscape amenities looking at it in a cohesive way and so when we're looking at all the streetscape amenities we really want to want them to kind of blend together and all essentially you know um, be part of the same palette and so that also ties into the identity and I know there's been a lot of discussion about what is the identity and which direction so that would be something that would be really great to get the community's feedback like what is the identity and how do we tie these amenities into that identity yeah well it just may slip in there yeah um yeah the branding and the identity is really important here and as odd as it may seem the lights that are selected that are preferred would trickle down to the rest of the furnishings and so it really helps set the stage for the identity and the two that were um, discussed last time we're having the more timber theme to reflect the, the culture history um, of uh, of Sweet Home, but but then there's also a precedent for more historical lighting from 100 years ago, which is on the left. So it would be great to get your feedback on those options. Yeah, and so um, as we go through, and then thanks, you if you want to. The last the last slide is really just looking at this the site furniture options and how that kind of ties back into um, into also the lighting and, and all the other elements within the streetscape. And um, yeah, there was a pretty clear sort of direction with this too. These were the three preferred um, selections. And I think it's just good to note, so for example, that first um, that first bench, you know, there's, you could have it, you could have the wood, all the steel, all just the, the metal. The second option is really great because it has, it's very versatile. You can use it in multiple different ways. So for example, it doesn't just have to be a bench. It can be um, a seat on top of a concrete wall. And so there's multiple ways to actually use that um, that line of of um, furniture options. And then finally, a sort of a more traditional, the Scarborough line. And um, with that, I think it's just really, yeah, kind of getting a sense for what the community wants, how, you know, how this ties into what you um, see Sweet Home in terms of how this identity will kind of run, these things will kind of run together. And so um, we really appreciate all the feedback we got from um, the um, previous meeting. So I summarized everything and at the very end, there's other comments and I just bolded anything that was mentioned more than um, twice in the comments that came back. There was really a lot of comments on Facebook and from the the um, surveys that went out. So yeah, it's great to see um, so much community involvement. And I think at this time it would be good. We can, we have posted all the, the drawings and everything up on the board here. And so I suppose we'll start with questions. And and then, you know, as we go through, if anyone wants to get into more detail, we'd be happy to answer questions. At this time, let's open it up any questions of the Planning Commission or Council. Question I've got is. Oh, the drawings are really beautiful. Yeah, turn it on. 
Most of your drawings are really beautiful. Um, looks really great. I guess one of my concerns is that you do that, it's going to bring more people out. And what I was seeing, like on Long Street, I really didn't see like bike paths. Um, and that should be really important because if you're going to do that, people are going to come out to, the, to see the city. And a lot of people will probably take their kids on a bike ride through right. the city. So you want to make sure that's safe for people on bikes. Th thank you for mentioning that. And Luzanne and I had a conversation just before the meeting in the parking lot. We said, just don't forget to talk about bikes. And we forgot. Forgot all about it. Um, thank you for bringing that up. Long Street is seen as a Shero Street. Where bikes and where bikes and cars are shared uh, on that. So yeah, that's uh, that came out of the first meeting as well. And so yeah, bikes. Uh, we'll have to talk to you about bikes on Main Street. That doesn't that that is a little more worrisome. But Long Street would be great to have a shared street for bikes. And as you saw in the furnishings, you know, bike racks would be located throughout the downtown, so you could do your destinations. But yeah, thank you for yeah. I, I don't know. I can't believe we forgot to include that. So thank you. And if there's any other particular way that bikes or it should be accommodated, we'd love to hear it from you. Because the only thing, like on uh, Long Street, you had some some of the road um, in the, um, things coming out into the road, kind of. So the bike would have to like go around, and if a car was coming, you know, and a bike was trying to go around, the car might also hit the bike. Well, there would not be designated bike lanes on Long Street. It would be shared with cars. So we're thinking that you know the 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 speed of a vehicular would be would would accommodate both bikes and cars. So it would not be a, there's not enough space for a designated lane, and it could cause you know conflict. So the current thinking is anyway that it would be a shared traffic lane bikes and cars together on the same lane. And I think, um, Joe, maybe you can speak to this. I know that we had a conversation about the Sharrows being also part of the bigger vision as well. I know that they connect down on, um, what is the street? The <laughs> yes, we we have the Sharrows in the uh, travel lanes down there at uh, Oak Terrace and Terrace Lane at Long Street where that Oh, those two or three streets come together. Um, I believe it's three going uphill, two coming downhill because the, the travel lanes are narrow through there. It's an awkward turn going up the hill. And mm -hmm. um, the, the Sharrows are a good standard way of indicating to drivers to share the road. We need to paint them this year, but they need it every year. Yeah, you put uh, an emblem in the yeah. travel lane, so it's very clear that it's a share your know, bicycle and cars. Yeah, it's a it's quite a large stencil that goes in the pavement. So, uh, just curious. I know that you've you've taken some stuff into regard from our last meeting, especially on thirteenth. Um, I it's it's a simple thing, but I'd still like to see it one way traffic north to south not south to north i don't know how many people try and turn on to main street from 13th it's not something you want to do regularly let alone with a semi truck that delivers to the feed store so i highly recommend maybe flipping your plan still going diagonal on one side <clears throat> and parallel on the other which is also a concept i think you might want to look at for long street instead of redoing all the sidewalks and spending, you know, 60% of this budget on Long Street when our main objective for this in the beginning was to draw pedestrian traffic to Main Street and that's where the businesses are. Yeah, the, uh, we'll have to have our um, traffic engineers look at that. The, the initial uh, and Joe had a Joe and his staff had a concept that kind of um, informed what we showed here with the diagonal parking and so forth. And there were some reasons why it was not desirable. I, I guess it's a hard a hard right turn from Main Street on the 13th because of the angle. Um, but your point, I I think it's also been mentioned, it's difficult to 
go northbound on 13th and take a left on Main Street. To turn any direction, oh, just based right? based on street parking and visibility. Okay, yeah, that would be a consideration. And I, I think that our initial thoughts, and it's not developed because we don't have the engineers involved yet, but would be it would be a right turn only on, you know, if you go northbound, it'd be a right turn only on the main rather than crossing and turning left or going. Yeah, I just find if you drive it, if you drive it a couple different times during the day, you'll find that visibility to the to the to the west from 13th looking up, um, up Main Street is not very good because of the buildings. No, because of the parking. Oh, the so parking you get enough stuff. cars along Main Street, you've got to creep in order to get out past where you can see it. And at that point, your nose is in the first lane of traffic. OK. So and you're going to force every single car on 13th to go out that way. So it does back up and there's quite a few cars that park there for the gym um, and, and other things down in that area. But yeah. Well, and the, the traffic flow is, is pretty big there because it's just the way it is. And also uh, there's a problem with people maybe not quite following the speed limit. I mean, it's really close, like within 15, 20 miles an hour. So that's he's right, absolutely right. I hate to admit that, but he's right. <laughs> uh, but th that is true. So my question is: is so uh, if you're going to do something on 13th, I would not be opposed to one way either, uh, mainly for that reason. I, it's hard to get in and out of there. But uh, are, are is your plan going to be not to have a blacktop and maybe have uh, uh, concrete with you know slashes in it so that? So that it looks more like uh, up, upbeat or upgraded or something instead of the way it is now. That's a great possibility. Yeah, there's no reason it has to be asphalt. It could would you, be. Would you do me a favor? Would you say that again? <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're 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 not necessarily great fans of asphalt ourselves. Um, so yeah, it could be something different. You know, we're showing a a huge, you know, about the size of this room. Um, a circle of a paving feature in the center and then you know expanding the sidewalks larger but yeah you still have asphalt uh, where the parking and the travel lanes are doesn't have to be that could be concrete absolutely if that's the the direction that we get there there are some festival streets that don't have curbs at all and they use uh, changes in the asphalt or changes in the concrete to kind of signal where different things are where parking is where the travel lane is and mm. so forth and that way when you shut that street down you can have people walking through at it and nobody's got to remember where the curb is a lot of times if you ever attend a street festival and you have vendors along the curb you have people tripping all over the t all the time because they don't remember that the curb is there because the whole atmosphere is so much different than a street so we're looking at like a delineation between sidewalk and parking of maybe a 24 inch wide strip of concrete you, flush with both you could have that you could have uh, the drainage could be handled with like the middle of the of the road rather than the than the curbs on the side yeah, you, these are all possibilities to kind of make that street feel like a pedestrian space when it's closed down and you, you can you, you could have removable things too you know you could put um parking bumpers that are designed to come out um, or ballers that are designed to to be moved to different places and, and use those to to outline where where cars park and where people um, congregate. Yeah, and, and in fact, the diagonal parking, there's really, and that, that was the thought with these drawings, there, there's no need for a curb if you use the bumper stop, which could then be you know, removed several times a year when there's a festival. Uh, parallel parking would be a little different because you know you have to kind of know where to, you know how, you know where to stop your where to park your car, uh, but that can be done through other means. So yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, the other options are pavers. You know there could be pavers used, and then uh, certain pavers could delineate the parking stripes instead of having paint. So those are all possibilities. That uh, you know of course that's the most expensive. Sometimes the the most fun possibilities are cost the most. As you know, but yeah, that, that that's all on the board. That that's a possibility. I'd like to also see. We're going to spend a lot of money on um, the city. I'd like to see more spent on Main Street. Main Street is the gateway to Sweet Home. When people drive in from 
Libyan, Albany or whatever into Sweet Home, the first they see is our businesses. And those businesses need to go wow so people can pull off and shop. And I think we need to upgrade Main Street if, um, more than what we do in Long Street because they're going, you know, those businesses that are on Main Street need to thrive in business, you know, and they need to also work with the city by updating their buildings and stuff. But we need to spend some money on Main Street. Right. Yeah, I agree. And it, 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 we can look at the plan together where we see opportunities. We're showing it on the plan. You know, we can't in, you know, we can't mess around from curb to curb. Because that was kind of recently done by ODOT and we can't really narrow the travel lanes by more than 12 inches. And but there are there is real opportunities that we've highlighted on the plan. So, yeah, we can take a closer look at that. And if you know of some areas in addition to that, it would it would, it would, we'd love to hear it. Um, you know, the the, biz, the buildings too, and I know the city, I think it, you know, there might be a um, fu some funding or potential funding available for matching grants and that kind of thing to upgrade the buildings um, as well, which a lot of times goes hand in hand with streetscape improvements. And just to comment on that, for those who aren't aware, we do have a, a um, commercial exterior improvement program that the council recently increased the the funding levels on and so it's a great opportunity for for businesses to get uh, some help to update the exterior of their buildings um, it's it, it is pretty expensive to to change commercial property but um, but with that grant and the levels where we are now it is uh, it's a lot closer and, and a lot uh, more feasible for a business to to improve their exterior and so we all we always like help getting the word out if it's amazing to me how many people don't know about that program, despite the fact that we've been talking since till we're blue in the face about it. Um, but it, tell everybody, you know, to give me a call because I want to talk to them about their building and how we can help. Blair, if I may, is that for business owners or property owners or both? Yes. So um, it, it ultimately, of course, because it's a change to the property, um, the property owner does have to sign off on it. But business owners can apply for it as long as they're if they don't own the property, as long as their landlord signs off on the application, it'll be considered just as much as anything else. The only real restriction is that it has to be a uh, the site has to be within the city's commercial zones. Um, so uh, I've had people recently contact me who are outside the city, and unfortunately we can't do that, but also uh, areas that are residential don't qualify. Blair, you know, they're, they're, um, you know the organization Habitat that builds houses. Habitat for, for Humanity. For, mm -hmm. And I, I really believe Sweet Home's got so many people that are so eager and, and wanting to donate some of their time. If, if we could... Um, get a hold of all these businesses that need some repair or some painting and stuff. I bet you on a weekend people would come out to help paint free of charge for some of these businesses that don't want to like open their wallet to to improvements. A uh, couple gallons of paint and some free help would make a big difference to that's, the city. That's a possibility we can look into, certainly. A volunteer project. So real quick, just because I don't know, has there been a mass mailing to property owners within the area and business owners alike as far as the availability of that money? Um, um, a physical mailing, no. But so it's just word of mouth. It, we, we try to get it in the paper as much as we can through social media, word of mouth, uh, using all the city's resources that way. We haven't at this point done a mass mailing. Um, simply because of the the cost versus other options for getting the word out, but we certainly can look at just that. just curious because I know that uh, a large portion of our commercial property in that area is owned by people that don't live in Sweet Home. We have so, other yeah, we have other things that we're working through now too to to improve our communication with them. Um, with our we've been working through our new vacant buildings ordinance to to get better connections, better better contact information with those folks. Um, but yeah, that's these are all arrows in the quiver that we need to make sure we have available. I think that our city has done a, a, an exceptional job, in my opinion, in reaching out, trying to to find these owners and talk to them about the C grant program. There is a few vacant building owners who have absolutely 
rejected the idea and have refused to do anything. So we cannot force them at this time, but they have been approached. They have been offered it and they've just said no. So you can just, that's one of the problems. We can't force them, but that's something we're working through as a city. So Mr. Mayor, I have a question. I have a question. Um, most of the parking is owned by private businesses in town. So what are your plans for more parking? Uh, well, uh, for example, in 13th Street, the diagonal parking uh, provides more than parallel parking. So there's only so much we can do on the um, public side. Uh, we do have a parking consultant that if there's private parking lots that could be better organized uh, for more efficient and higher density parking, we're going to identify those areas. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I have a question also. So you were saying that you wanted to um, make Long Street more narrow and widen out the crosswalk, I mean the sidewalks, is that mm -hmm. correct? Um, would it be possible to share some of the wider sidewalk and put those diagonal parking spots on one side and maybe switch back and forth so some of the businesses that use that parallel parking aren't without but the one side has wider crosswalks can we, you fit parallel uh diagonal parking that is a really really good question you know we didn't specifically look at that but we can we can do that um we're able to do it on 13th because it because we are considering it as one way. However, on the two way street. We may not have enough space to do that, or if we do, then we won't be able to increase the sidewalk widths. So we'll we'll have to look and see if it's possible to do both. Yeah, I was wondering just if on one side was diagonal and on the other side was the wider crosswalk, but I think I counted 14 spots on 13th on your one way. So um, I think you could maybe add more parking and not upset the business owners on Long Street. Cause I feel like if you widen the sidewalks, you're gonna take away parallel parking on Long Street. No? Uh, no, not, uh, no, the parking count should be fairly similar. Although okay. we are adding some mid block crossings, but we're trying to limit those to where there's not parking to begin with. Okay those locations so but um, yeah that is a good point we could look into the, the parking strip takes about eight feet width right how much width does a diagonal parking strip um have? yeah with joe's uh chart i i believe it is about 19 feet something 19 or okay. 20 feet because you're at an angle mm -hmm. so yes and so I'm, I'm i think the initial thought was um if we do that, we won't have, we won't gain anything on the sidewalks, but you, we should verify that. Of course, yeah. the, one option is to eliminate, you know, you could eliminate a parking strip on one side in order to have diagonal on the other side. Well, that would be possible. I, um, you know, I don't know how much you would gain by doing that because I think you get, you basically get, um, you know, for each, two parallel parking spaces or uh you know you you can fit in one you you know, no. yeah so but it's worth looking at right right yeah we we, we can do that and compare yeah, that's a really good point that'd be a good study for us to do last clarification you're you're absolutely correct i did a measurement it is 19 feet thank you so we're gaining six feet by narrowing the lanes from 14 to 11. And so if we lose, you know, eight feet of parallel parking, if we need 19 feet, then we're, you know, we really don't gain any sidewalk. I, I'm no good at math. I, I, I could use my calculator, but I think, you know, it just doesn't seem to pencil I, out. I'm just nervous about the businesses on Long Street. And I think um, they would probably like some clarification if they're going to lose parking when you take One, away some of that road. I, I think you open up a good conversation because what we could look at is diagonal parking on some of the other side streets. You know, for example, 12th, 15th, you know, we, we, 
and we've done that in other towns um, where there's parallel parking on the main streets, but then we can we can add diagonal on the side streets. So we will definitely look at that. It, it'll probably be easier to 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 see it on the on the plans up on the wall, but on Long Street, from what I've seen, the only areas where you could potentially lose parking would just be the mid any mid block any mid block crossings. Everywhere else, the the parking would pretty much stay the same as it is now. What's interesting is that on Long Street, there's a number of areas where you already have parking that's not allowed, but that space is still covered in asphalt and it's still part of the the, the street width. And so it's kind of wasted space because it can't be parked on, it can't be driven on, and it's not uh, available for landscaping or walking either. And so if you can reclaim some of that space, there's a lot of a lot of benefits to be gained. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised that over on Main Street where the Rio is, uh, it's all yellow paint in front, so you can't park there. So that's a great opportunity to you know extend the sidewalk there, which we're considering on the plans. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're trying to where, where we have the bulb outs at the intersections, you can't park on an intersection anyway. You have to be offset a certain distance. Um, so you know, we try to keep as close to the existing numbers as possible. But you know you lose one here or there where you're putting, trying to get some amenities in. But yeah, we we will look at other side, you know, other than 13th, we'll look at those side streets and maybe even, um, you know, south of Long Street, there's diagonal parking opportunities there that we'll look at. One thing that is really interesting, I I, I recommend that all of you take a look at an aerial view of of the downtown area that we're talking about and look at where their park where parking is available. And when it comes to areas that could be devoted to parking, there is an astonishing amount of parking. There's just a ton of, of space available. The problem is that it's all divided up among the various property owners. And but much of it is paved over and much of it is used for parking. And so if we can help people to realize that they have a lot in common, uh, these neighboring property owners and, and that cooperating on parking would really benefit everyone. Um, it, it would make it a lot easier for everyone in town to to park and to to have good access to various businesses. We we have plenty of space. We just don't have it allocated in a way that is understandable to people um, because they're worried about parking on private property where they're not allowed to park or so forth. I think that's a lot of it, some truth to that. I I listening to some of the conversation. I have to agree. We can't lose sight of the emphasis of our downtown businesses because that is important. Mm -hmm. On the same token, we cannot lose site on our long street businesses because i mean they're just as important and i agree with you about the parking sign and i think a lot of it is when you come into sweet home a lot of people don't realize there's parking behind the businesses downtown tons of it there's okay. tons of it when there's not i don't know if necessarily we've got the proper signage letting people know that there's parking behind i think signage can make a huge it impact a huge impact and i think also there's an education component mm -hmm. is that in a in a in the downtown that we want to create, we want to create opportunities for people to patronize more than one business per trip, right? We want people to get out and walk around and go to multiple businesses and then go back to their car. And to do that, you have to have these, you know, cooperative par uh, parking arrangements in place. But you also don't need to have you got to help people realize you, you don't need parking right in front of your business because we want to promote that walking around bit. Um, and, and having, you know, the, sure, when you go to a shopping center, it's convenient to be able to park right in front of the store, but it's not realistic for a downtown area, unfortunately. But we do need to improve our signage. We need to improve all the cooperation and 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 because there's there's plenty of space available. And I agree with that cooperation side of it. And I'm going to be careful with my statement here, but we have some business owners that are selfish in allowing the use of their their parking. And to me, that's not pro-business mindset. I think all business owners should work together to allow parking throughout all of downtown. That's what how you're going to improve your business. Um, the thing about, you know, Long Street, yes, Long Street and the side streets, that's uh, on us. We can do a lot there. But when it comes to downtown Main Street, I just also just a reminder that one of our biggest obstacles is going to be ODOT. And ODOT is, is very stickler, and some of you know, know ODOT. Good luck with the challenge because it's going to be that, be a challenge if you do anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, you know, we're not doing any major 
interventions on uh, Main Street, but there's definitely opportunities for pedestrian improvements and better eye appeal. Uh, but your know, wayfinding is, I, I think that's a really good point that came up is the wayfinding to the parking and then utilizing the alleys in a better way. You know, we, we've discovered that the city owns some right of, owns the alleys that provide access to those private parking lots. So, though, you know, along there, there could be wayfinding. We're talking about it being more, a little bit, like we mentioned earlier, a little bit more pedestrian oriented. Um, you know, one last comment about um, parking. I know it's probably not going to be popular, but I, I was part of the team that was here in 2003. <laughs> and uh, you know, we did a study. We had a, uh, a parking consultant, you know, regionally known parking consultant on the job. And we've never gone to a downtown area that says we don't have a parking problem. Every town says we have a major parking problem. Uh, however, when that 2003 study was done, there was not a parking problem. It's just that people didn't want to walk ha a half a block to get to where they want to go. So you know, part of our overall vision is to create a wonderful downtown where you don't mind walking half a block. Uh, the, the parking inventory is there. It's not a problem. There are a few hot spots that uh, Joe has mentioned. Uh, to be and to be honest, once this is all said and done, you know, we want there to be a little bit of a parking problem. You know, in any case, that there's something going on. Right? I mean, if there's a ghost town, you know, like uh, so, you know, Eugene has been over the years. Um, one final comment, if I may, on the parking. Um, I, I, I'm glad you mentioned the alleyway as being a major opportunity. Uh, the thought it just occurred to me that the alleyways, uh, you know, it's public right of way. It's it's something that we control. It, it may be a way that we can throw our weight around, um, that the city can throw its weight around and, and try to get change made when it comes to the parking areas that adjoin those alleyways. I don't know exactly what uh, that would look like, but it's uh, it's certainly an idea and we, we should be able to have some influence over the parking areas that are connecting and using those alleyways. I know in the past years, we've had some business owners that fenced off their parking lots and they barricaded some of their parking lots. To me, that's not solving the problem. If you got a problem, there's always a resolution to that problem. And I think those business owners should reach out and figure that solution to the problem out instead of right. developing an anti-business mindset and approach to the city. So when you say parking, we really don't. I don't feel we, we have a parking problem. But we don't have a parking problem. I think a lot of it is the signage, communications, and working as as one as a, as a community with all the business owners coming together and working together. It's that simple. That's great. So, Mr. Mayor. Well said. One thing, one park, parking problem we do have, though, is we have no recreational vehicle parking. And in the summer, Highway 20 is extremely busy with recreational vehicles. And there, if someone wanted to visit a park or stop and have a hamburger or walk the town, there's no place to park those big rigs. And or even the smaller ones, let alone the big ones. And um, that's long been a frustration on my part that there is no recreational vehicle parking. Are you thinking that that should be in the downtown core? I'm thinking it should be close to the, the downtown core because that's the road the people are using. Yeah, where? Yeah, that's. I mean, no, that's a valid point, and it's, I I can throw. I mean, it's not in my, and I'm just throwing this out. I mean, this is for what it's worth. I mean, it's a little bit out of, out of bounds as far as RV. And I agree with Council Gerson on the RV. There's, I don't, I don't have a solution to that problem because we don't have a place to park them. But uh, you're talking about 13th Avenue, uh, closing that off and making it a fair or something. We're always looking for opportunity for our farmer's market. And maybe that might be an area of 13th Avenue is where we hold our farmer's market. I'm just throwing ideas out. I mean, everybody might say that's a crazy idea, but I'm just throwing that out. And then the parking lot that we're using that's in front of the old city hall, that could be maybe reconstructed for RV parking. But again, you have to have signs saying RV parking this way. Um, Again, I don't know any other place you can park an RV, but that might be a solution. Um, I'm just spitballing, but throwing it out the, there. Uh, city hall, I think the city hall site is where the current farmer's market meets. Correct. But, you know, the concern was that's a little disconnected to the core of downtown. So uh, your idea would be, you know, the RV, yeah, that maybe that's 
could be um, envisioned as um, you know large vehicular parking there. I, I think it's a, it's a it's probably the best location that I can think of. Yeah, uh, great. in relation to the downtown. And one thing I will say, RV parking in a downtown area is extremely. I, I don't think I've ever seen it anywhere. It's 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 relatively non-existent and it's unexpected. And so if we actually did have such an amenity, I think it's certainly something that we could we should advertise the hell out of and um, and make people visitors aware that it's a possibility because that's just really unusual. Um, it'd be great if we could find a way to do that. McDonald's is the only one that I know of that has a couple lanes kind of pretty much designated for RV and boats, you know, big parking uh, on their one side of their property. Um, but it's so far away from downtown then McDonald's is, you know, somebody parked there to, to walk to businesses. Well, yeah. the, problem, the problem with Bymart and McDonald's, you got to get in there and you have to get back out. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Uh, I really like your concept for the 13th Third Street thing. I really do. I think that's really a really good idea. And I hope that we can get going on that. And I think it would be nice at some point, maybe we do that little thing in front of the uh, the uh, gym. Mm -hmm. Perfect spot. Yeah. Perfect spot. You know, it'd be a perfect place to start to let people know that, that that's what we're after. And, and I agree, we have nowhere, nowhere in our city does it tell you you can park somewhere else besides on Main Street. Nowhere that I'm aware of. And I've lived here all my life. So, uh, but I, I think I, that's, to me, 13th and a, and a, because, you know, we need a one-way street because Lebanon has a bunch of them. So we need to kind of catch up. But I mean, so, no roundabouts, no roundabouts. Oh, that's true. Okay. Are you getting that, Joe? No roundabouts. Who wants a roundabout? No, none. It's too much. Space. I'll second that. <laughs> I'd like two roundabouts on First Avenue. <laughs> yeah, great feedback. Uh, does Safeway have um, the, the Safeway bring in RVs? Uh, what what about Safeway? Could they devote well to it, their parking there? No one likes, you know, I guess from the store. Joe, can you answer that question? Because if because there is some developing that's potentially going on there, but that's being a little bit kept under the wraps. But right. again, Safeway is would be a decent place, but it's a one way. It's on the other side. You're coming back. You're not going when you're coming into Sweet Home. You have to be able yeah. to turn. That'll be a little bit of a challenge, but yeah, it it would be between the Safeway parking lot and the the abandoned building at 15th. There's a wide open area that's more or less used for large vehicle parking, but that may become a travel lane for a replacement building sometime this summer, mm. and but even that lane perhaps could be designated to have some exclusive RV parking. But right now it's just a big section of paving that people park in the middle of. That, that is definitely a challenge, trying to find RV space. So, Mr. Mayor, I like the idea of the 13th, but for me, I would block it off completely. I would make it a plaza street, a walking street. That solves that problem. I wish we could go. I mean, no, I'm just saying, I'm, you're asking my opinion, David. I'm giving you my opinion. <laughs> it's not a. Why not? Mr. Mayor, you're supposed to make it out of order. I think having an area where people could. Uh, congregate a plaza if you will is really important and um that looks like it might be a nice place for that yeah um yeah why why wait till you know why make it three times a year when you could have fun there i i, I put on the i put on the uh, gateway fun on 13th and that's what it should be Okay, not between 
Okay. I will be devil's advocate on that, though. Um, you will absolutely kill Steelhead's parking by removing 13th. So, and it's one of the major draws to the downtown area right now, other than, sorry to say, the liquor store that's right next door. So, I would be highly opposed to seeing 13th done anything other than your diagonal one side parallel the other just because they would die and that we all know there's a source of contention with the big parking lot next to the Rio. So there's the chance that that won't even be available here within a few months for use. So yeah, I would hate to put all my eggs in the one basket. Yeah, there are 15 parking spaces that would be lost by that happening. And, you know, Downtown malls don't have a good history of closing down their streets and keeping their economic vitality on those streets. You know, they're opening the streets back up again, typically. But that's a great, yeah, great brainstorming idea. I hadn't thought of that. The other thing is that the more diagonal parking you have, the less RV parking you have on the streets because now currently if you do have an RV you could park on the streets taking two parking places but if you and not on 13th but I'm thinking Long Street for instance if you put diagonal parking on Long Street you're going to limit what a possible RV parking spaces because they can park in two parallel parking spaces but not diagonally at all so yeah, That's we were going to look another. at um, based on uh, Angelita's idea of diagonal parking on Long Street. We'll look at that, but I, you know, if the math works out the way I think it is, we we won't be able to fit it anyway. But yeah, we'll look at it. But that's a consideration. I guess the bigger question is how important is it to accommodate RVs in the downtown core, or should we maybe just look at some suggestions in the peripheral areas? Well, from my perspective, I don't know how important it is because we've never done it. So we don't know if people would stop if there was an opportunity to stop. Um, currently, they just drive through. and there's, But if you're coming from that direction, they've gone 90 miles without a stop. This is a logical place to stop, but there's no place to park. So anecdotally, um, the chamber has commented on one of the things they love about their existing location is um, that they can accommodate an RV or two during the summertime um, that, that will come in and visit the chamber to get maps and information and things like that. Um, so conceivably, there's at least a couple of RVs a day that would, uh, during the, the peak uh, season, that would stop for for the uh, for the chamber and so if they'll stop for the chamber they'll likely stop for other other businesses as well if the if the opportunity was there i think it it does come you know i agree with what he said about still we've got to be careful with still in the, in the liquor store but the other thing to keep in mind is it all comes back down to signage and, and pointing in the, in the direction when you're talking about rv most of rv is in your summertime or for the most part, I mean, you, they do RV year round, but um, we have a high school parking lot that could be designated as a also a possible RV staging. I mean, it's somewhat close to downtown too, but again, there's no signage that would lead them that way. That's a good point. That's probably underutilized in the summer when school's out. Yeah. Yeah, we were looking at that as a potential gathering space, but it just seems to be you know filled up from the high school every day. But during the summers, yeah, that's a, that would be a real possibility. Yeah, the signage is very important because the RVs, some of those RVs are really big. And some of the roads that we do have, an RV can't really turn to, to get into that road. So, you know, if we have a couple signs saying um, 13 or just giving an example, um, RVs, you can turn down 15 or certain roads that they can accommodate to be able to turn down because some of those roads, some of these RVs are buses so they can't turn into a small road so i think they need to be educated with a sign out there 
let them know where to go. I like your idea of the farmer's market on 13th and the where the farmer's market exists now as the RV parking lot. And there's ways to get RVs through there as we had that 100 foot Capitol Christmas tree truck coming through that area. So it, it's manageable. Well, also keep in mind, and I, I mean, I threw that farmer's market out there. Farmer's market's not a year-round thing anyway. We're talking a very small window when they're open and doing their thing. So it's just it's a thought, but I, I agree with what, what you were saying that, you know, we have to be mindful of the businesses like the liquor store and, and Steelhead too. But so it, it's going to be a challenge. Have but we looked at a festival street in between Long and Kalmaya that could potentially incorporate the library plus the farmer's market? Oh, on 13th, uh -huh. thing on 13th. We haven't looked that far, but we could. And have that, we don't even really need that back half of the street, just as long as the post office had a way to make that circular area. Um, that, I think that's one, when it comes to the festival street, at least my, my main concern in, in the discussions we've had has been visibility from Main Street, uh, simply that the best way to get any attention or to get anybody to stop is to have something that they can see while they're on Main Street. And uh, unfortunately, back where between the library and the old city hall, it's it's not visible uh, from Maine, and that's the main issue. But I but one thing that, I've, that has occurred to me is that you have between the old city hall and the library, you've got a street, a parking lot, and then a street, and mm -hmm. then the other building. Um, you almost don't even need that many streets. Um, there's there's opportunities there for something something bigger. Um, the only downside is that it's just not visible from Maine. Well, Mr. Mayor, uh, I want to move on to lights here in a minute. But another thing that we need to be concerned about is Sankey Park. If you've got a manufactured home, I mean, if you've got a, a travel trailer or an RV thing, there is nowhere to park down by Sankey Park. Nowhere. So that's something we're going to have to deal with at some point because you can't park. It's narrow. What is that on 15th, 14th, whatever street it is? Uh, yeah, you can't park there. Uh, and, and like he, somebody said, they're long. So a lot of them are long. Uh, so I've got a question about lights. So we're going to put lights up there like there's by the Sandy M Supply, which is not what it's called anymore. But uh, if we're going to put up lights, I, I, I like the picture she have. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to, I'm going to let, I'm going to let Councilor Coleman pick those out. Uh, but but uh, is there some way that we could use, have you ever used solar instead of electric uh, to save money for one thing? And the cost of putting underground pipes in is expensive, very expensive. So I just wanted to run that by you. And also on the 13th Street thing, uh, we got to deal with ODOT somewhat there to cut that blacktop out. I don't know how far they go in at our blacktop, but. Uh, that would be a concern for me too. So, uh, I, I, yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, the uh, intersection where it connects to any any of the side street improvements that we do, where it connects in the ODOT, it would need their approval. Yeah. And I think during the next stage of design, we'd probably do that, get their input. Um, but the um, see the your other question was concerning the lights, um, solar. Um, I'm not so sure it does well, especially here in the winter times, but we'll, we'll ask our consultant about that. The popular uh, um, light right now is LED because yeah. it's way more economical and a better quality of light. So I think that whatever we do would want to be LEDs, yeah. but we, we can look into the to the solar. I, I just don't know if it will meet the, uh, the requirements um, that are needed for illuminating streets. Did, uh, speaking of lighting, was there any more comments on, is there a preference between the more timber theme versus the more um, ornamental historical lights that it's been there, those those options there? Is there any preference? Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, I think that we should stick to more of a timber theme. I mean, just because it's sweet home in general. I don't think that we should start drifting away from anything modern at all. But I think a wood type of thing would be good. And then kind of back to the 13th Avenue, if we did close that off, could you do like other things in just like a farmer's market or little events there? Like, could you do kind of like a gathering place or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, you know, uh, when we're talking about the farmer's market there, 
if it's not that big of a farmer's market, one possibility would be instead of closing off the entire length between Long and Main, just half of it. You know, you could put bollards, removable bollards, uh, just have the north half devoted to that uh, because we have the alleys to use. If you enter, you know, from whichever way you enter, you could exit through the alleys. So there's a lot of flexibility there, which is great. Um, yes, they could be used for any events downtown. You know, that's more of a programming uh, from the city. Could be flea markets. It could be farmers market. Could be Saturday markets. Uh, you know, whatever. Um, you know, what whatever it would lend itself to. We we currently have a special a special events permit process that we use for things like the jamboree and the harvest festival and um and those are open to anyone who puts in an application and so, um it, you know right now we have various parks and Weddell Bridge and and places like that available, a festival street would basically be added to that list where uh, if you want to have an event and you put in your application and you give us your the information of what you want, um that could be arranged as well of shutting down that street for that event. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I, I like the timber themed lights, but um, on on Main Street in the center, there's already existing lights that don't follow that theme. So you, well, I don't know how much it would cost to take those out and put other ones in there. So, I'll, so I think that if the people like the an antique ones, we already have that center strip in the middle, I'm just nervous about losing our timber identity. Yeah, that's a really good point. Those median strips surprised us when we came to town. Um, you know, I was part of that team in 2003. We said there should be a median here, but we never thought there should be pedestrian style lights in the middle of a state highway. You know, where you need them is, is over on the sidewalks. So, yeah, that's a really valid question is are they needed? Uh, should they be replaced? Should they be removed in favor of having more pedestrian style timber theme lighting along the sidewalks where they actually benefit people? And I'm not opposed to more lighting in the town wherever we can get it, but I just am not sure how those two styles would go together and how much additional cost that would bring. To yeah, I, I think the thought is if the timber theme is selected, that those guys would need to find a new home. I mean, I, 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 that was discussed at our last meeting, and um, it makes sense. Yeah, you wouldn't want both because they're, they're really competing in terms of what you're branding and what your image is to the public. I think it's an important discussion of what is, what is, what is in the median that you want lit, um, and, and do you need landscaping visible at night? Some people like lights on their landscaping, some people don't, um, but... To my mind, one of the things that surprised me when I came to Sweet Home was the 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 lights in the median. The only reason they the only thing that they actually do is light up the the landscaping, which is great if that's what the goal is. But they're not actually helping anybody walk safely at night or anything like that. But I but yeah, we would want to make sure that there's some consistency. But those lights could be replaced with lights that are especially intended for highlighting landscaping or uh any artwork that might be placed there or something there's there's a lot of possibilities with that median that um i think it's underutilized so about the artwork if if that's okay there's by my house there's some i think old riggin stuff mm -hmm. and i would just like to incorporate some of our identity in the artwork not real modern stuff because i don't think people would appreciate it and it might be kind of wasteful but if we can keep who we are while we're transitioning to who we're going to be, I think people would appreciate that a lot. Yeah, that's very, but very well said. On that note, one possibility is if we cooperate more with the Eastland Museum, they have a number of artifacts that are basically hidden right now mm -hmm. that are out, that are that are old farm equipment and old logging equipment and things like that, and it's all in that uh, in that covered shed on the on the the property that, that where it's not visible at all. And so finding a way to highlight those things, those it could be that some of those things are the right size to be used as public art um, and their public history. And it's just a matter of finding the right way to display it um, in a way that is protected. That's an idea. Yeah, and, then, and uh, yeah, I'm really glad you brought up the art because it's so important for the art to reflect you know, who you are, the, the culture, the history, 
the identity that it wants to tell a story or maybe even take you through a journey as you as you as you go from one to the other i think i might like to make a statue of the lady mayor back in the day so people would know we had a lady mayor long long ago before it was popular <laughs> right you guys have an art commission or some means to because we're, we're creating places for art and uh yeah, it'd be wonderful if there's local artists that uh, could be commissioned for this you know in the future if you only there were a local organization devoted to art we have the Lynn County Art Guild. <laughs> yes, we do have a volunteer organization that's working on art in the com in the community. And yes. we would stick our fingers in this for sure. Something <laughs> to keep in mind. I mean, all we're doing right now is conceptual design, but it's not too early to start giving some thought as to uh, you know how it may develop. And David, can, correct me if I'm wrong, when it comes to the final adopted plan, um, You'll have locations identified for our work, but not the specific artwork itself. No, we, uh, because that we would, leave that to local There artists. would be a public, that would go through a public process for the council to, you know, dictate how that artwork would be selected. Well, I agree with the artwork should reflect on our, our history and our area. I agree with that. In regards to lighting, I, I would keep, you know, keep in mind that if you do anything out of wood, it better be long, long term. term because we are in Oregon and we do have rain. And so one thought would be to maybe potentially, if you do something, you want the wood theme, they make uh, material that looks like you can make a post that looks like wood, but it's not wood. So that would be one thought. So you'd have an invitation that looks wood, but it's not. Well, fake, you're, you're fake, promoting fake I've, wood. Yeah, I've seen there's some. A, that, there's some tinted concrete that's stamped to yeah, that looks like there, wood. There's some concrete that mm -hmm. looks stamped, and it does look like wood. In fact, I just looked at it here a couple weeks ago. It's pretty extra. Pretty yeah, it's, a, it's been a concern of ours also is the longe longevity of the materials. And, and we did look into some manufacturers, and you know they, they have technology now where you know it lasts forever. I mean, Sisters has that pretty harsh environment out there. Yeah. But yeah, that that would be a priority when that time comes to make sure. And I like solar, but I don't, Council Trask's idea of solar. But again, we're in Oregon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you can have a little bit of problem with that. And when you need it, the but I do like it. Ain't no sun. I think with yeah. the with the with the sidewalk improvements we're talking about anyway, you're you're already talking about having the ground opened up. Uh, I don't know that it would add that much more to get the power routed. So would you be able to incorporate solar and power in the light and like cut your bill in half by using solar in the summer and electric or whatever in the winter? I don't have an answer on top of my head for that, but we can look into it for sure. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's been done in other places. Um, it would have a visual impact, certainly, um, because you'd have to have lights that are that actually have panels on them. Um, yeah. But yeah, they don't. They just don't collect enough power. Yeah, that small. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know if uh, you know the the whole idea of sustainability and current thinking on that hasn't really brought been brought up much. You know, we talked about stormwater treatment at one time, and there just wasn't a whole lot of uh, interest in um, you know necessarily in that. We, we we not that we won't have them here and there, but um, I don't know if that's something to follow up on is sustainable type of uh, you know, streetscape identities. Um, oh yeah, we'll, we'll look into the solar. We'll, we'll look into the solar, see if it's even a possibility. <laughs> well, if you go up to a Woodburn and toward Salem, you see all the fields full of solar power. I mean, they're all over the place. There might yeah, well, be a hundred of them. Yeah, it could be. I thought you were going to say a windmill. No. You could bring a windmill. No, no. Okay. Uh, but I mean, they they must be working. And yeah, we'll, we'll too. yeah, we'll look into. We'll talk to our lighting engineer about that. Yeah. So I think I think that's a good point. I don't see how you cannot pay attention to sustainability. I think it'd be really remiss. So that needs to be added to your list. Um, also, one of the themes that I'm hearing is pedestrians. So I just want to emphasize. I like your idea about mid-block mid crossings on long. 
regardless of where you think you can add parking, people are going to have to walk from point A to point B. And making that easy, making it accessible, um, and having the signage. Because essentially what I'm hearing is people could be walking all over from 10th to 15th. So make it pleasant and sustainable. <laughs> yeah, we're on the same page and and um, you know, where we have landscape areas where there's a low point for drainage, you know, why not use it as a, a rain garden? Yeah, exactly. That, that's a possibility. We just don't want to make other people mad if we put rain gardens in. Well, the other thing is, you know, if you if and I know everybody in this room has tried to cross Long Street, it's not easy. So it would be good for it to be easier. Yeah, and I can show you on the plan later where we're making that a real priority. You know, so you don't have to walk two blocks to cross the street. And, and, and it's, it's a narrower crossing. You know, it's, it's going to be six feet less if we move forward with these plans as it is, but we'll make that, you know, a very pleasant, ex safe experience as much as possible. Mayor, I, if you, if the council and commissioner have asked the majority of their questions, if we could open up to the public as well, if there are any public comments. Yeah. Um, questions. Open up to public comment at the moment. We, we know Thomas has an opinion. Running power lines everywhere, and so it'll be. I don't want that. Yeah. Uh, running <laughs> power lines everywhere, and you're going to only need very little power to run these LEDs, and they're going to be extremely bright. So just, I mean, going solar is great, but the technology, I just look into it before you dive into it. It's not worth it yet. Okay. You know, there's a lot out there that's coming up. I mean, we wait another five, ten years. But LED lights are the way to go. There's okay, no um, doubt. Go you, for it. You, you trigger a, a, another thought with your battery charging. What do you think of uh, electronic, uh, of, of car charging stations incorporated into the streetscape as looking forward? Um, I know Eva would probably like the idea of, of having, uh, you know, we're, we, we're doing that on other streetscapes where we have, you know, just a couple charging stations. If I could jump in real quick with the charging station, I've been looking into it the past year. Doing grants with the Pacific Power, everything was stopped with COVID. Don't know why. I have no idea why. But uh, Sweet Home would be a, a prime spot for a charging station, but there's some... The people that have the cars that are coming into Sweet Home are going over to Bend. You remember these cars could run to 250 miles per charge. Are they going to stop at Sweet Home and do a level two charging station? That's going to take you know, four or five hours to charge for the little bit they need. Um, yes, we do need it. I've been looking at it behind the Rio at the park, put two charging stations, do a level two. Level one's not worth it, those are residential. Level three, you're looking at 400 volts of power, DC power, but you're looking at an hour charge, but you're looking at $30,000 too. But if there's grants that are willing to do it, put it out there. Um, you know, but are people, if they're gonna watch a movie, yes, Park back there and charge it. Why not? But it's still going to cost them. You know, it, it costs money for power mm -hmm. and installing it. But there's grants out there like crazy. I'm seeing them right now. They're popping up all over. I'm yeah, looking you, at to you, it. I'm yeah, looking you have your finger on the pulse of what's going on now. You know, what, we're talking long term vision. You know, we want to incorporate a few in in the long term vision for downtown Sweet Home. Maybe on 13th where the diagonals are, just maybe two spaces um, are designated for car charging. Um, you know, that uh, is that a popular um, idea? It's I'm like Tom. I, I've been approached, too, and I've looked into them, and it's a challenge. It's a lot involved. It's not just snap a finger and put them, put them in, and I've questioned that. So, I mean, we need them, but it's going to be a challenge. Yeah. Would it's, those it's, two it's, spots on 13th take away from normal park parking? Would it be electric okay, vehicle? We'll come over <laughs> 
I'm okay with that. I mean, it was just a thought. Um, you know, we're just doing conceptual planning right now, so you know, it's not going to happen within any short time frame. But you know, just as, if is it the direction you want to move? We just talked about sustainability, and that's. I'm okay with some of them being incorporated. I just know that 13th is a busier street because of Steelhead, and I wouldn't want people to think, oh, I can't park there because I don't have an electric vehicle right now. That's but true. I know that is future. But 10th Avenue sounds like a great road. I think I think you'd want to have your uh, your signage and your policies in place. You you certainly can put, you can probably accommodate those just about anywhere. And the question is how do you handle it when you have an event going on or when there's no parking available otherwise you know are you gonna are you gonna ding somebody for parking where an electric vehicle could charge and that that's basically that can be tackled with you know just a figuring out your policy and putting the signs up any other questions I think that um, the chargers for cars would be a good thing to look into where to put them. I have no idea. <laughs> or it'd be the most beneficial, I guess you could say. So, Mr. Mayor, my last question. I, I think that we're allowed to run side by sides on Long Street and the side roads. Correct. So maybe if you could incorporate some parking for those that are shorter, you might be able to get wider sidewalks, I don't know, and then they would have a just a spot for them. I see them driving all around. You're talking about compact parking spaces? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, for uh, for side-by-sides, for uh, like, uh, what, do you, what, do you, I mean, what is another name for them? Four, four wheelers. Uh, oh, ATV. Oh, okay. Or, I wasn't uh, sure what a side-by-side you know, side Basically, off-road golf carts, I guess you could call them. We had a lot of those driving on long, so maybe if you could shorten some, we could widen out some of I think so ODOT calls them OHVs, off-highway vehicles. Oh, well, how much of a demand uh, is uh, it's pretty common it along Long Street, huh? I see them all over. There may, yeah, sure. Yeah, that would free up some space for other things. We could find out what dimensions are required for those. It, it could be that there's some areas where you don't have quite enough room for a park for a regular parking spot, but you have enough room for one of those. Yeah, sometimes you have you use that for motorcycle parking mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be fun. Any other questions or comments? So uh, from this point, uh, as you know, there's the we have things up on the wall, and it's it's basically the informal uh, mingle and look at the pictures and and um, I, do we have uh, anything to make dots, dots or make comments about? directly on them or anything? Like yeah, that? there's dots and did you bring the sticky notes? Mm -hmm. And there's sticky notes, and you can write directly on them. We'll put some pens out, but also just ask questions if you you know you're unclear about any of the concepts and this main plan is really where we've shown all the Im proposed improvements so take a good look at that there's sections you know the sections are down there so you can get a better idea of what we've been talking about and yeah please ask questions and just let us know if there's anything in particular you want to discuss okay at this time i will go ahead and adjourn the meeting we can roam and do do that and uh, well, we'll adjourn the meeting. I want to thank you, the Planning Commission, for coming this evening. I appreciate all your comments and efforts and what you do for the community. I thank you very much. Also, I want to thank uh, DLA for coming this evening, your presentation, and everything you do. So, that said, uh, we'll go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 7:32. Thank you for all of your great.